86 now, Hillary's Hell Has No Fury tour. For some reason, old Hillary is out on the talk show circuit again. Get to that in a moment. And for obvious reasons, the mainstream media are all over her as she sits there, just sits there, attacking the person who embarrassed her in 2016. Is it time to, dare I say, lock him up? Lock him up. What do you make of it? Um, yeah. <laughs> I believe strongly that um, this particular incident has had such a huge impact because we've known for a long time that he was a corrupt businessman who cheated people and we've known that he and his uh, campaign asked for aid from Russia we've known that but to see him in the office of the president putting his own personal and political interests ahead of the national security of our country just pierced through whatever confusion or denial people had and at that point uh, speaker Pelosi rightly said this is something we have to investigate, and that's what's going on. <laughs> it's pathetic. Hillary is a loser. She lost to Donald Trump, but she can't go quietly into the night. She just can't do it. And the media are enabling this sad display of zero class. Joining me now from Reston, Virginia, from the Media Research Center, director of MRC-TV, Eric Steiner. Eric, there's so many things to talk about when you see Hillary there. You know, especially when you think back to her husband and the way he desecrated the Oval Office and did jeopardize our national security because of his sexual exploits. But the bottom line is Hillary's out there once again on this book tour. She's on another, another book, the title of which, by the way, is so ironic that it's not lost upon this observer. <laughs> No, it's 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 the book of gutsy women. Yeah, it's uh, it's the book. Uh, I don't think it mentions Monica Lewinsky by any chance, or uh, you know Paula Jones or Linda Tripp or or those people. But yeah, she's making the talk show rounds. She's being asked all about her thoughts of impeachment. But you know, she has a really good firsthand knowledge of impeachment since oh I don't know it happened to her husband. <laughs> but they never want to ask about that. That's the one question they don't ask. They don't bring that up. Well, you know, your husband was impeached. No. No, they want her opinion on Trump. Of course they do. And she's bringing her daughter along. Her daughter co-wrote this book with her about gutsy women. And of course, you know, a daughter wants to defend her mother, but she's really troubled by the lock her up chants that are heard at Trump rallies. And it's like, well, yeah, maybe uh, it's troubling because maybe, maybe she should be locked up. But, you know, they don't bring that part up either. It, it's really a sad display. But yeah, she's making the rounds on the talk shows talking about this book about gutsy women. And this is, you know, the woman that went and walked through the woods alone for months after the election. Gutless uh, women is what they are. And by the way, it didn't seem that Chelsea had any problem when that crowd was chanting, lock him up, lock him up. Didn't seem like she had any problem with that. Another, another Clinton hypocrite, effectively, is what we have, sitting right next to the number one hypocrite, uh, which would be Hillary Clinton. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, uh, apparently she believes in the First Amendment, as long as it applies to her and her Twitter account, but not to Donald Trump and his Twitter account. No, she's going around saying that, you know, uh, Trump should be taken off of Twitter. He doesn't deserve the privilege because uh, it, it, it's the way he speaks. She's saying, oh, you know, it, sh it should not be used in a way that's belittling or harming anyone. This is a woman who uh, compared ICE officers, you know, she made a comparison to the KKK. Her supporters run around with abolish ICE. She says uh, lots of belittling things about President Trump. She said a lot of belittling things about uh, Brett Kavanaugh when he was nominated for the Supreme Court. And even recently when more fraudulent al allegations came up against him, um, you know, it, it applies to others not to her, for her it's okay. You know, she has no problem with stuff Maxine Waters says. She's never brought up that being an issue. Uh, when Maxine Waters runs around saying harass Trump supporters and, right. and members of the Trump administration, wherever you find them, that's okay. But you know, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, Donald Trump has the privilege of Twitter, even though you know it's a great way to get your message across without relying on the leftist media for the most part. You self accept it, obviously. Oh, obviously, and you just mentioned ICE. Uh, there's a reading out of Los Angeles. If anybody wants to know the cost 
of, of these sanctuaries, the cost of the sanctuary city of Los Angeles, uh, it's a hefty price tag. It is a hefty price tag. It's about $1.3 billion, I think, over a two-year period uh, for Los Angeles County. And Los Angeles County has the highest concentration of illegal immigrants, according to many studies. This is about a quarter of what they spend on welfare is being spent on illegal immigrants. Uh, this comes from the County Department of Public Social Services. Their numbers have been released. And a lot of people are saying, you know, this could just be the tip of the iceberg because uh, they actually, you know, take in about $3 for every $1 that they spend, right. um, according to at least one study by the Heritage Foundation. So uh, basically, this is a large amount of money being spent on illegal aliens who, of course, in Los Angeles County, get access to food stamps and a lot of other welfare benefits. Right. Imagine what that $1.3 billion could be used to help the homeless in Los Angeles. Eris, thank you.